There you go. So I heard all about, you know, the talk before about don't ask about Max Payne 4, and I'm not going to ask you about Max Payne 4 at all. What I am going to ask of, what I am going to ask you about is, uh, yes. what is it like, you know, creating a new IP each time and. You know, people always want that one iconic figure back, and <laughs> is it is it hard to introduce each time? Do you always get those questions, and you're like, I want to I want to show this new creative project I've made, this new baby, and they just won't let you have it? You know? <laughs> no, I it it's you know, it's a compliment when people ask that. Uh, you know, when when they really love something and want more of it, you know. The only way to take that is as a compliment, uh, and and that means a lot. I keep on asking. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someday we can ask uh, answer something else. Then yeah, sorry no. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, creating a new IP, uh, yeah, I, the, the, there is a lot of work, a lot of uh, challenging on the on the way, and and it doesn't really get any easier. You know. Max Payne, Alan Wake, Quantum Break, Control, you would think that, you know, now I know how to <laughs> do this. Yeah. But it's always a new set of challenges and, and, you know, game is a complicated thing to create with so many moving parts and big team working on it. It's always a team effort. So, so it takes a lot of effort, uh, but it's understandable that, that yeah. you know, working on it people don't really know I mean you you try your best to spread the message and 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 talk about w what the experience is going on get people interested get, get people excited but it's very easy to be excited about something that you have already played through and and liked of course with the whole telekinesis aspect of control I was wondering if you guys looked uh, back in the past that you know PsyOps, Mind Gate Conspiracy, and all those games for inspiration, or if they had any effect at all on. Because uh, I've heard you guys say previously, I think around E3, that you know, uh, this is going to be the definitive telekinesis <laughs> game. This is going to show how it yes, should have been done. Yes. Well, PsyOps certainly great game. Um, yeah, it's it's there as 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 part of the inspiration. Um, the cool thing about telekinesis is that, well, because it's so much tied to the physics and, and because the technology is going fast, forward fast always, you know, the current gen uh, uh, engine gives you opportunities that were not possible uh, previously. Uh, and, and we've been pushing the engine uh, forward a lot and the tools a lot with the physics, with the dynamic destructibility of the environments. And, and these days you can do more than, than you could with, with uh, you know, previous platforms. I've read that originally your face was chosen as the face of Max Payne because you couldn't hire, like Remedy couldn't hire uh, actors at the time. Yeah, that's that's really yeah, true. The, now, the, the, now Courtney's around. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's become that's become the face. But yeah, right. I mean, really honestly, you know, way back when when we were uh, working with Max Payne, uh, and and Re Remedy was just starting out. I mean, Death Rally was at the end of the day a very small game, and 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 Max Payne, as we went along, became bigger and bigger. Uh, but it was very much. A kind of a bunch of young guys, almost like a garage band, you know. Um, how much of it was really <laughs> professional, how much of it was kind of a hobby in a way. Uh, you know, there, there was that line when it flipped over, but, but you know, for a time there you couldn't tell. And, and I, I don't think that we, you know, part of it was budget, and, and, but part of it was also like, no. Face. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a, it was a pretty good face. No, no, but no, no. We we really didn't even think about the possibility. I mean, we yes, we had professional actors as voiceover, but but you know, back then all the characters usually for games were just created, you know, like like cartoon characters essentially, and and. What we wanted to do was 
to push the realism of it. So we ended up using photography as basis for uh, the graphic novel uh, in the game. And then somewhere along the line, you know, the textures for the characters were hand drawn. And, and that's how it was done, if there even was any textures on, on the early 3D models. And, but, but somewhere along the line that the five-year uh, development process, uh, there was this idea that, hey, we could actually use photos as textures. And, and already way back when for the graphic novel, the decision you know, had been done uh, that, that you know, I would be the model of, 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 of Max. And, and I brought in my whole family for different roles in the, in, the, in the graphic novel. My mom was the main bad guy, Nicole Horn, and my dad was uh, the shady government official, Alfred Woden. My brother was one of the mobsters. You know, it was just friends and family and, and, and very much a kind of an amateur thing going on. And then suddenly, you know, we made that flip from drawn to let's use photos. And, and then I'm like, Oh, you can actually recognize me from there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. And, and yeah, that's how it came about. Courtney, for you, obviously you're, you're an actress in The Bold and the Beautiful, and you've done voice acting work before on Halo and many other games. And I'm, I'm curious, how do you prepare for uh, a role for voice acting, especially because I know a lot of times you have to uh, record character deaths and screams and all that kind of stuff, which has got to takes its toll screams. on the voice of screams. Yeah. and how do you manage to you know go on set record that kind of stuff and then go act and have your voice intact and that kind of stuff so. yeah I mean I approach it the exact same way you know I mean whether it's just my voice or not there's still depth to it there's still um, you know a, a character composition and so I mean as far as my voice goes it's just um, you know a matter of really taking care of it and and noting like how to breathe properly you know and and stuff like that but I mean as far as the actual acting goes it's it's similar you know I, I, I still put my face into it and my whole body into it as much as I can with all of those moments I'm not just there just like opening my mouth and screaming you know my whole my yeah. whole body's going into <laughs> it as well um, and I'm actually, you know, whatever the instance is, whatever the threat is that I'm screaming from or whatever I'm, you know, the, the, the scene is, I'm, I'm still acting as if there was a camera on my face. How connected to this character do you feel you are at this stage? Very connected, actually. You know, I, I very early on, you know, from the second I got all of the, the description of Jesse, I sat in my room for a really long time and I just created in my mind, you know, I went through each of the the, the bullet points of, you know, the storyline and, and her characteristics and her attributes and stuff like that. And I, and I really sat down and I allowed my mind to kind of go to these places that Jesse was going and who she was. And, and so I, I feel very connected to her and, and she's still changing, you know, because there's still more of the story that is being written and, and places that we're going and, and things that will, um, Jesse will encounter that, you know, obviously change you and grow, you know, you grow as a person through, through each encounter that you have. So um, that's something in development for the future. But as of right now, I mean, I, I feel very connected to Jesse. And I read in E3, uh, they said no fetch quest. Why did, <laughs> why did they feel they had to elaborate on that? Do you feel there's too many fetch quests in games these days and you want to make sure you're clean, concise, to the point, direct? You know? I mean, I, I think that the, more, the point there more is that, that uh, we really uh, want there to be interesting narrative. Uh, to what you are doing in the world and and you know in this game there being main missions and side missions and exploration stuff all kinds of challenges we try to find ways of, of making that meaningful that that make it feel like uh, you know this is meaningful uh, uh, you know interesting uh, gameplay related stuff for the player, but but also for Jessie as a character that it makes sense for her to do these things. My last question for each one of you, uh, where do you hope Control will land? How do you think uh, fans will receive it? Where do you see it one year from now? We'll go with that. Uh, I hope it's the biggest game that is that everybody's playing. That's what I hope. Amen. Yeah, me too. 
Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I, uh, I hope it's done. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's I uh, starting from that. I, li I like yeah. before when they asked you uh, if there uh, was going to be multiplayer, you're like, it's single player. Yeah. <laughs> it is single player, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Dude after that, it's single player, dude. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we put a lot of effort into making these things, so, so obviously, hopefully, uh, uh, gamers will like it. DLC on the way? I mean, it's... <laughs> Yeah, nothing to announce on that, uh, but but certainly, kind of, we set out to create fiction and world uh, that is more long-lasting. Uh, so we are looking into that. Awesome, guys! Thanks. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you.